Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to take a look and see how the CA PRN codes are generated. CA, of course, stands for coarse acquisition. PRN stands for pseudo random noise. So this is a code that comes from the satellites to the receivers that contain the information which satellite is coming from. How are they generated? Well, let's first again look and see what is contained within this message. So each coarse acquisition message consists of 1,023 bits. We call them chips. They're like bits, they're zeros and ones. The reason why they call them chips is because they actually carry no real data. They do carry the information of which satellite it belongs to because each satellite has its own unique code, but it doesn't actually carry significant information, such as what the time is or anything like that. That time is encoded with other messages that are superimposed on the CA code message. All of the 1,023 chips are generated and sent by each satellite every one millisecond. So every millisecond, all 1,023 chips or bits or zeros and ones are sent in a package from each satellite for receivers to, to receive them. Yeah, that's what receivers do. They receive those messages. And they're selected from a set of gold codes. Now, this is the key. Someone named Robert Gold developed this system of putting a code together, the pseudo random noise code together. And he did that all the way back in 1967 and is a technique that is still in use today. They're also used for producing the P and the Y codes and we'll get to those later. Now we're talking about the CA codes. The way the number of chips in a message are determined, they're determined by one, well it depends on the number of chips or the number of bits you want to use to develop the code. In this case, we're using 10 bits to do so. So the sequence of 10 bits generate that code they're all reset to ones at the start of each one millisecond. So they're all set to ones, and then we go to the system of manipulation, which is basically what we call the polynomials, the generator polynomials. That's what we call them here. Let me underline that. So we're going to use two generator polynomials, polynomial one and polynomial two, to manipulate those 10 bits in such a way that they'll produce a unique code for each satellite. Notice that each satellite, each space vehicle, has an identification number, one, two, three, so forth. Currently, we have 32 of those satellites. And we set up the codes by summing up particular bits in that string of 10 bits. For the ID number one, as the ID number one, we sum up two and six out of the set of 10 bits using polynomial two. For space vehicle ID number two, we combine three and seven. For ID number three, we combine four and eight. And there's a different number of combinations that we use to sum these up, each in each case producing a different code. Now, the first polynomial, polynomial one, has the formula one plus x to the third plus x to the 10. Now, don't be afraid that x to the third and x to the 10, those are not really exponents. It's not like we put a value in here and raise to the third power put a value here and raise to the 10 power. This really means this is a bit, the third bit in the string of 10 bits. This is the 10th bit in the string of 10 bits. On the second polynomial, notice we have one plus x2, x3, x6, x8, x9, x10. We will pull information from each of these bits, the second, the third, the sixth, the eighth, the ninth, and the 10, sum them up and use that to feed in the bit string. So what's going to happen is each case we sum up a new number that gets put into the initial bit string and every, all the other bits move over by one bit or by one position and then we do the whole process over again. Essentially what happens is we pull the tenth bit out of the first polynomial set and sum that with the sum in the case let's say that we're dealing with space vehicle number one we sum up bit two and six from the ten bit string of the second polynomial and add that or sum it with the output of the first polynomial by taking bit 10 value and that will then be the output to the code that we're looking at. That's that gold code we're talking about. Each time we go through one step we put out one chip, one bit or one chip and we do that a thousand and twenty three times. The thousand twenty four times we reset everything, everything back to once so each bit string of 10 bits will be reset to one at the end of one millisecond and then we do the whole process over again. Each time we manipulate the, the, uh, ten, the 10 bits of the first polynomial, the 10 bits of the second polynomial, we take the 10 bit of the first polynomial and a summation of two of the bits of the second polynomial, 
put it all together, and that then, then feeds the code one step at a time. Of course, what goes into position 2 and position 6 and position 10 will depend upon these particular polynomials. These polynomials drive the manipulation of the bit settings in those 10 bit strings so that each time what comes out out of bit 10 and what comes out of the summation of two of these bits will differ from step to step and then, then that will then generate that unique code which can then be associated with a particular space vehicle. So that's the methodology they use. If you kind of got that, now let's go look at an example of that to facilitate the understanding of how this really works. Once you see it, it's not so bad and it's pretty nifty. This person, Robert Gold, was pretty smart to come up with something like this. I'd be really challenged to try to do the same. Probably take me 100 years to think of something like that. But anyway, let's go look at our next video so you can see how that's actually done. It's pretty amazing how we did that.